What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, tender, amazing barbecue venison sandwich. Coming up. This is some venison. Pat it dry. And what I got here is a chunk of venison shoulder. Got this from my good buddy Evan Leroy who went out and got a deer a couple weeks back and was nice enough to give me a chunk of the shoulder. And to be honest, I don't know all that much about cooking venison, but when I think about a cut from the shoulder, whether it's a lamb, a pig, or a cow, I'm thinking about pulled pork, chopped beef, pulled lamb, to make some really nice juicy barbecue sandwiches. So that's what we're gonna do with this guy. Now, as far as trimming this thing up, I'm just gonna go around and take off any silver skin or any pockets of fat that I see. Cause I know venison fat can be kind of greasy and waxy and not taste all that great. So we're just gonna go ahead and clean this up as best we can. Definitely got a good amount of silver skin on the back, which I'm not too concerned about, but if I see it, I'll try and clean it up, make it look nice. Definitely a lot of silver skin on this cut. Reminds me of trimming a tenderloin or something. And there we go, that is looking nicely cleaned up. And I gotta say, that is some beautiful meat. The color on that is just spectacular. Beautiful stuff. This is in fact, bone in. But we're gonna leave it that way. And hopefully, all this meat will shred off at the end of the day. But first thing we need to do is get this thing seasoned up. As far as seasoning goes, we're gonna hit this with a little bit of hot sauce. Why not? Usually I'm not a slather guy, but if we're trying to pull this at the end of the day where bark is really not the end goal, then might as well add a little flavor, get some more rub on there. And then of course, for a rub, we're going on with some good old fashioned chud rub. On sale now. And we're just gonna get a nice heavy coating. Pat that in. Oh yeah, you know the drill, folks. Just putting spices on meat. Flip it over, same deal on this side. Ooh yeah. And just get it everywhere, folks. And of course, you cannot forget the sides. Come on, It'd be a rookie move. Beautiful, let's we'll start on the pit. And on the pit we go. Not really trying to cook this thing too specifically right now. We're just trying to get some smoke on there, get some bark. Mostly just adding flavor. The rest of the cooking will come later. So we'll check back in on this in a few hours. And just like that, about four hours later, this thing is looking nice and smoky. Bones pulling back a little bit and it's about as barky as you're gonna get a super lean piece of meat. And because it's so lean, we gotta finish this off with some fat to make sure it's nice and juicy and nice and tender. So. Into a bag it goes. That's right, folks, we're gonna do the classic confit sous vide. Meaning, we're gonna throw in a whole bunch of beef fat. Just a healthy couple of dollops in the bag. Cause you know, if life gives you a piece of meat without any fat, you just have to add some fat. But we're not adding just fat because I figure this is a great opportunity to add some more flavors as well. Including a whole bunch of garlic. I think confit garlic in the bag is gonna be really awesome. Add some great flavor. As well as some fresh rosemary, a couple of bay leaves, some fresh thyme. And because red wine and venison go so well together, I figured we'd add some salt like red wine as well. Just a splash. Ooh, beautiful. Now I'm gonna seal this up and pop this into a sous vide at 185 degrees overnight. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a virtual private network or a VPN that keeps your information safe on the internet by encrypting the information coming from your device being sent to the internet. And encrypting your data keeps you safe from big corporations or cyber criminals. Especially when traveling, having a VPN is a great idea because using public Wi-Fi can be super risky. Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ad, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, allowing you to monitor the web safely. Yet Surfshark doesn't keep any of your information or store any of the data or monitor what you do online. A VPN like Surfshark is not only great for security reasons, but the way it works is by changing your IP address to anywhere in the world. This way you can virtually travel the world using Surfshark's more than 3,200 servers in 100 countries. Which basically means I can change my IP address to anywhere in the world and bypass any censorships. Which is really convenient on streaming platforms like Netflix, because if something is blocked in this country, I can just change my IP to another country, and it gives me a whole different variety of content based on what's on Netflix in that country. So if you're wanting to browse the web securely or just looking to see what content is available in different countries, click the link in the description box of this video where you can drive Surfshark for yourself we're using my code you can get 83% off plus three extra months for free again link in description you can get 83% off Surfshark and three extra months completely for free Surfshark has a 30-day money-back guarantee so you really got nothing to lose thank you Surfshark next up let's make buns 
You've seen me make buns plenty of times, so we're gonna bust through this real quick. Warm milk, yeast, sugar, eggs, quick little mix, bread flour, dough conditioner, and some salt. Let that come together. And then in with our softened butter. Now we're gonna need this for about eight minutes. Beautiful. Once you get a nice supple dough ball into a grease bowl, it goes. Cover this with some plastic wrap and let it rise for about an hour. And once doubled in size, out it comes. Boop. And we're gonna portion this out into 75 gram dough balls. Roll them up into nice little balls. Beautiful. Now we're gonna get our oven preheating to 375 degrees while these rise for another 20, 30 minutes or so. And once nice and fluffed up, we're gonna hit these with a quick egg wash. Oh yeah. And instead of sesame seeds, we're gonna garnish these with some fresh rosemary because that just seems like it's gonna be pretty and tastes great with all the rosemary we threw into the sous vide bag with the venison. And now we bake them off. And just like that, these things are looking absolutely gorgeous. And fresh out of the oven, you know we're gonna drizzle these with a little bit of melted butter just for good measure. Oh yeah. Nothing wrong with that, folks. And at long last, I think it's time to check in on our little venison roast here. Been cooking away for almost 24 hours at this point. So simply enough, we're just gonna open up this bag here and pour out all these juices. I got a little perforated pan on top here. So all the fat will go through and all the meat will stay up top. And if everything went according to plan, this should be impossibly tender. And yeah, it looks like it. Beautiful meat. Is it tender? Yeah. I'd say so. Woohoo, that looks good. Smells so good. So at this point, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pick out all the herbs, the thyme and the rosemary that are in there. Make sure there's no bones or any cartilage or anything in there that we don't want. But I'm definitely gonna leave all this garlic in there because it is completely just mush. Just mix that right on in with all the meat. It's like deer barbacoa, that's crazy. Yoink, big old bay leaf, don't wanna eat that. This garlic is ridiculously tender, just boop. Oh, love it, turns right into a little garlic paste. And as far as these herbs are concerned, you know, any of these little leaves are more than welcome to stay. It's just any of these tougher stems that I'm looking for, you know. Don't wanna be biting into anything that's too woody. But this stuff is just shredding up incredibly well. All that garlic is infusing in with it. Smells very strongly of rosemary and venison. Definitely getting a little bit of that red wine in there. This is going to be a fantastic sandwich. I tell you what. And like I've done in the other barbacoa videos, I'm straining this in this perforated pan, but if it ever seems too dry, we can always just, uh, you know, add some more fat right back to it. And there we have it, folks, in all its glory. And to be honest, I did not intend on making deer barbacoa or Buccacoa here, but uh, that's exactly what it looks like and pretty much exactly how it came out But this stuff is nice and juicy smelling nice and fragrant full of that confit garlic I think it's time to build ourselves a beautiful little barbecue sandwich Beautiful bun as always So light so squishy beautiful and just because I'm feeling kind of naughty I'm gonna grab some of this confit fat that we just strained off of that venison and we're just gonna paint this bun with that Oh, yeah, might as well, right, folks? Toss these off in the chud press real quick. Beautiful. As far as this sandwich is concerned, I'm gonna keep it pretty basic. Just gonna add some pickles and some barbecue sauce. Some Leroy and Lewis beet barbecue sauce. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, love that color. Followed by a nice healthy mound of our beautiful garlic confit infused, herb infused venison. Looking good. And then for some acidity, we're gonna go on with some pickled red onions. Made these, I don't know, in one of my recent videos. I make these all the time on the channel, but super easy to make and great to have on hand. Oh, top it off with our beautiful rosemary bun. And there we go. My venison barbecue sandwich is complete. I mean, what's not to like about this folks? Beautiful, fresh, homemade bun topped with rosemary. Some beautiful venison. I mean, would you just look at it? Come on. Oh, I gotta dive on in. I gotta say folks, I'm pretty excited for this one. I haven't had venison in a long time and I've never seen venison look this much like barbacoa before, but ooh, this thing is calling my name. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Wow. That is a symphony of flavors in your mouth. It's just very much a barbecue sandwich, but it's got so many different flavors with the garlic and the rosemary and the thyme and just that unique venison flavor. But it is by no means dry, I'll tell you that much. Oh. Mm. I've never tasted anything like that before. Truly fantastic. The pickled red onions on top 
are perfect. You know, you got that acidic bite on top of all of those really nice floral notes, and then that super, what's, how do you say beefy, but for venison? And that beet barbecue sauce just complements it all perfectly. Oh, mm, mm. Not to mention freshly baked buns never make anything bad, am I right? I'm gonna have to go get my own deer just so I can make a bunch of these. Oh. You could do this with any part of the deer, you know, throw some shanks in there, any cut you like, you know, because the bones come right on out. Honestly, it's a super easy recipe too, you know? I smoked this for, what, four hours or something? A little bit of chud rub on there, and then it was unattended all night. Beautiful stuff. All right, folks, I'm gonna eat the rest of this off camera, but before I go, I think it's time for the official taste test. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic smoked pulled venison barbecue sandwiches. I highly recommend giving this one a try. Again, I'm pretty sure this would work with any cut of venison you've got lying around, whether it's bone in, bone out, or probably even just small bits and scraps. And especially if you or someone you're serving is on the fence about whether or not they like venison, this is definitely the recipe to go with because with all the garlic and herbs and beef fat and other flavors going on, I'd be hard pressed to find anyone that wouldn't like to eat this sandwich. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!